So today I'm at Fish Brothers in Swindon here and looking at the new Townstar electric van which is the replacement to the old Nissan ENV 200 there. So next to it there in grey is the combustion engine version that's been out for three or four months now and last week they've just got in their first electric version here. So like many Nissan vehicles they have the same trim level so it starts with a Vizier and then it goes to a, a Center, a Tecna and what we've now got is a Tecna Plus and this one is a Tecna Plus. But like the original EMV 200 over there the Vizier is AC only charging and then from a center upwards it has DC rapid charging but also the AC charging is upgraded from the base 11 kilowatt to 22 kilowatt AC and that's on a charge port at the front we've got a light here as well and then uh, AC and DC CCS and as you can see three phase charging up there because the extra two pins are used and this one has got the 22 kilowatt AC because this is a Tecna Plus. Also note got a camera on the front here because this has got surround cameras so there will be camera at the bottom of the mirror there and at the back and this has got the bird's eye view system which I'll show you in a minute like the Tecna had on the um, ENV and uh, the Nissan Leaf. So this is the L1 version and they're going to bring out an L2 in July. So this is 1.8 metres and the L2 is going to be 2.2 metres. And for a standard base model, these are quite a bit bigger than the previous generation Kangoo, which uh, obviously these are ultimately the same van as a Renault Kangoo um, but they have extended the um, cargo space quite a bit. However even though this is the L1 we have got a sliding door on both sides which is something you didn't get on the Renaults and maybe it's something Renault aren't doing. Uh, the other thing you've also got here is a plastic bulkhead um, which is the first time I've seen one of those. No load through though but a bigger cargo area. Do you know what the volume is in so cubic metres? 3.3 on L1 and 4.3 on L2. Right, okay. Obviously here's our cables you get, Type 2 to Type 2, but we're also getting a granny cable there, portable charger, a standard as well. So having a look inside, this is a Tecna Plus, so you get leather seats, which you get also on the Tecna, and then the other models will have cloth. And if you heard that, you also get that welcome sound and graphics up there on the dash as well. So, let's jump in. Got a stop start button there. Very nice dash on this. So we have a ready light here. This is also our power meter here as well. And screen up here. I think this is a larger screen because it's a Tecna Plus. Let me just ask the chap here. So a Tecna Plus, you get a slightly larger screen than you do on the other models, was so that right? So on the, both Tecna and Tecna Plus, you get that screen. I'm going to have to just check that before I actually confirm. But Tecna and Tecna Plus, you'd have that screen. And yeah. then the Vizio and the Centre, you don't. Um, but bear with me, let me just actually confirm Okay, that. we've got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as well. And if I put the rear camera on, at the moment we're showing the front camera in the main screen. There's our bird's eye review, um, view. And then if I put reverse on, we're now seeing out the rear camera. So this screen is on the center models and upwards. So gear shifter here. Part of us neutral drive, all standard, but we can move it across to adjust the regen. And on these, you've got three levels of regen using the plus and minus there. And we can see up there on the screen, we've got a B1, B2 and B3. So a B1 is very much a coasting mode. 
that's a B2 is about the same as a B mode in the previous generation EMB200 and then the B3 is a little bit stronger regen but I would say that's still a little bit less than the standard regen you would have on the Kangoo ZE33. So we've got air conditioning and these have air conditioning on all models and also heat pumps on all models which is great to see that's something else others just aren't doing. This one being top spec we have a parking system and you've got automatic park but also all these different ways of parking in different car parking spaces so pulling in that way going into a car parking space that way going into diagonal car parking space or one that way i've never seen so many options on a parking system so these have a 45 kilowatt hour battery and that's 45 kilowatt hours of usable capacity as you can see here this battery is at 75 percent we got a predicted range of 104 miles at 75 percent but this is a new vehicle it's only done 35 miles so obviously there's very little uh, history there to get an accurate calculation the wltp figure for this is 183 miles combined or 269 miles city. As far as efficiency goes, I've just driven this for about 10 miles and we averaged 3.1. It's not to three, but that's because I've been sat here with the air conditioning on for a while. But at the end of that journey, it done an average of 3.1 miles per kilowatt hour. And that was with a mixture of driving. A lot of it was at 30 miles an hour, but there was a couple of miles at dual carriageway where I took it up to about 55, 60. So um, the efficiency for a van is going to be about that, probably three and a half miles per kilowatt hour. So this van's got a leather steering wheel because it's a top of the range model and it is also heated. There is a switch down there and then we've got buttons here for telephone and then these buttons can change the information on the screens up there on the dash. And this side we've got the cruise control speed limiter adaptive uh, distances because it's got the radar and this has got the pro pilot system similar to what you'd have in a Nissan Leaf. Nice quality climate control buttons here so this button you can change the direction of the airflow with a round knob we can change our temperature here or press it to get auto and then this is if you want manual fan speed heated mirrors uh, recirculation of air and then we've got air conditioning and that's standard across the range. And then looking at the top here, we've got storage tray, SOS system here, some coat hooks at the back there. We've got a steel bar in the middle of the bulkhead and then obviously all of this is plastic. The little tray there that you could possibly fit a mobile in. You've got a larger tray there which is where you'd put your phone and that does drop back there a few inches. Charging socket there. Two cup holders there and this storage bin in the middle. Glove box there is a usable size, got the manual in there, fuse box in it which you always get on right hand drive vehicles. But you get storage there and you get storage a little bit there behind the instrument cluster but also with a power socket and USB ports as well. And you also get a mobile phone holder here which you can switch around and mount it on this side as well if you want your phone over there. Audio controls on a stalk behind the steering wheel there and then over here you've got some switches to turn off traction control, adjust the headlight um, height adjustment and uh, that's your illumination of your dash and there's your lane keep to turn that off. So up on your main screen here, we've got navigation, radio, music, phone. Under settings, we can adjust the EV programming. So here we've got a charge scheduler. We've also got preconditioned scheduler as well. And there's a calendar there, which I assume that is an overview of your charging and preconditioning if you've got that set. Under car configuration, that's your welcome tones, wipers, door locks, driving, just indicators. 
So with these we've got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto but we've also got built-in navigation as well but you only get the navigation on the Tecna and Tecna Plus. The other models you would use the navigation from your phone mirroring. And the 16 inch alloys on here are only on the Tecna Plus, the same as that combustion Tecna Plus over there. And the other models have steel wheels with these flush style wheel trims and again steel 16 inch wheels. And this one in the showroom here is a Tecna. So let's just have a look at the difference because that one outside was a Tecna Plus. So it's still got the leather and fabric with blue stitching. Apparently the lower models have fabric and they still retain the blue stitching. There's that welcome. Got uh, painted bumpers on this with parking sensors. Look how close those two parking sensors are. Um, Grey underneath here with almost a, like a diffuser effect. It's very nice for a van. So the ENV 200 here has been around since uh, what 2012, 2013 or so, but has always been a larger van than the Renault Kangoo and indeed Nissan do sell the Kangoo and they badge it as the Nissan NV 250. So when the new shape Kangoo came out I thought it was going to be a smaller van, but these new ones which the Nissan version is called the Townstar, it's actually a bigger van. Oh, well, bigger than the previous generation Kangoo, and actually when it's side by side with this EMV 200, they're not smaller at all. If anything, it looks slightly bigger. It certainly looks more chunky. It's a little bit wider. Uh, the roof heights are exactly the same. If anything, that looks a little bit taller. Uh, but I'll put the capacities up, the cargo capacities, so maybe it is slightly smaller in the back, but it's certainly not the class down you know certainly not a smaller van which is what i thought it was when i saw the announcement of this what was that a year ago or so but anyway now it's here seen it in the flesh it's a worthy replacement to the env 200 it's certainly a much nicer vehicle to drive much better drive position far more car like and being an all new vehicle this is just lovely to drive very smooth very quiet and um yeah much nicer than driving one of them but not a huge difference in range. These, the last generation ones, have got a 40 kilowatt hour battery. These have only got a 45. So not much more range, but a much more premium and comfortable vehicle to live with. So looking under the bonnet on this, this motor is very familiar to me because that's the same motor you have in a Kangoo ZE33. And apparently this has got 45 kilowatt output which the Kangoo is 44 kilowatt. So yeah, obviously the same motor, maybe tweaked a little bit, but this van certainly is a lot faster than the previous generation Kangoo. Um, this has got a heat pump, which is all this over here, and these hoses down there, and pumps and valves down there. There's a lot of plumbing down there. We've got 12 volt battery in there, 60 amp hour 12 volt battery. Coolant bottle there, another coolant bottle here and um, all pretty similar to the previous generation Kangoo really. So I drove to Swindon in this Kangoo ZE33 and I was very surprised when I opened the bonnet of the new Townstar to see exactly the same motor in the new generation Townstar and obviously the new Kangoo E-Tech as this previous generation ZE33. I was surprised, I thought with a new generation vehicle it would have a completely different powertrain um, because these, they're not particularly powerful, they're best described as adequate but in the new Townstar that I just drove, even though I did only drive it 10 miles it felt a lot higher performing than these previous generation Kangoos do so it's surprising, completely different feel from effectively the same motor and same motor output as well so if you want to have a look at these new Nissan Townstar then Fish Brothers in Swindon here have got both the combustion engine and the electrical versions on their test drive fleet here. This one's only just come in, it's only done 35 miles as you've seen and about 10 miles or though of that I've just put on that doing a little test drive around Swindon. So come and see Stephen here. Uh, he kindly invited me over to have a look at this van and I thought well I'll make a quick video at the same time. 
So, as always, if you found this useful or interesting, please do click the thumbs up button. It really does help, and I'll see you on the next video.